Hey guys and gals, thanks so much for tuning in again right here on Hook, Line, and Singer. I am your host and resident singing fisherman, wannabe chef, Bob Sellers, and I'm back in the kitchen today. Going to be preparing uh, one of my favorite dishes, meatloaf with a twist made with delicious lean ground venison. Y'all stay tuned. I'll show you how I do it and show you how it turns out. Make welcome to her first yeah, appearance in a hook, line, and singer episode. See? She's like Bella. Very camera shy. Don't you have a speech prepared for the people? Hey, and bye. <laughs> this is my much better half. This is Kansas. This is Mama. This is the matriarch of the house. My number one. What you have to say, everybody? Hey! <laughs> It's about time I introduced you. She's very camera shy. Yep. 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 She's so quiet. So bet yep. my, I bet her sixth grade students would disagree with that. They ever heard you loud? <laughs> I've heard her loud too. <laughs> and this is Ellie. Hey. <laughs> Ellie is going to be a senior next year. Just had district honor band. She was elected captain of the band, the Gordo High School Grenadiers, for her senior year. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. I like to help cook too. You gonna help me tonight? You want me to? You know what we're making? Meatloaf. Do you like meatloaf? <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> yeah, she likes. I like the no onion. She version. likes. She likes chicken fingers. She doesn't need anything green. I tried pickled okra the other day and it's pretty good. Pickled okra? I did. Brandon Reese approves. <laughs> Brandon loves pickled okra. Anything pickled tastes just alike. Pickled eggs, pickled pickles. What are pickled Texture pickles? Texture just, you know. Cucumbers. See? I can't stand cucumbers. I won't touch them. <laughs> I won't eat a salad that cucumbers have touched, but I love pickles. Go figure. Alrighty. I have done a little Boy, I had to use, I had to say this last video I cooked in. Pre-preparing, pre-preparing, previously prepared. I've done some preparing in advance to shorten this up. Now these are all the ingredients that are going in our meatloaf. Of course, we have our beautiful, lovely ground venison right there. About two pounds, give or take that, maybe a little more, maybe a little more. I think there's, that's actually closer to three pounds. But that's all right. We've got two eggs. I've got one can of uh, tomato sauce. I've got one small can of tomato paste. Right here, I've got two uh, cups of bread crumbs. And we actually didn't have any uh, bought bread crumbs. And I'll tell you an easy way to get yourself two cups of bread crumbs. Uh, we put 12 uh, pieces of white bread in the oven and got them super toasty and crispy. Uh, put them in a Ziploc bag and just pound tarnation out of them with a uh, rolling pin or something. Rolling pin is what I used. Uh, I've got one large onion diced up. I've got a bell pepper over here. Uh, I've got all of my dry ingredients uh, put together right here already. Went ahead and did that in here uh, is three teaspoons of salt, half teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon or so of onion powder, a teaspoon or so of garlic powder, about a half teaspoon of oregano, and that's all of our dry seasonings for the meatloaf right there. The only other seasoning that goes in the meatloaf is uh, a teaspoon or so. Uh, Y'all know I'll probably do two. And I showed you guys this in my last cooking video, but man, I, I highly recommend that over buying fresh garlic. Nothing wrong with fresh garlic obviously, but uh, you won't get any more flavor or aroma out of real garlic than you do that right there. I mean, it's real. It's just, it's just minced and in a jar, ready to go. Saves you a lot of time. Does it smell strong, yes. Mama? Yes. Yeah. Very good. Mama says it does, but good. All right, let's put this together. In a large mixing bowl, I'm going to put our ground venison. I mixed my eggs and my tomato paste and my tomato sauce uh, in a bowl together. 
I added my all my dry ingredients to that and mixed it up real good. I poured it over the meat. Then I just poured in my onions. I added my bell pepper. I added my uh, breadcrumbs, and I added about two tablespoons of minced garlic. And uh, now, as you can see, my board is clean. Uh, that is a board that Wayne uh, Price, a friend of mine from Charleston, West Virginia, Wayne and Sharon sent that to me over uh, COVID-19 quarantine last year, and I use it a lot. It's beautiful, isn't it? I really appreciate it. Thanks, Wayne, Sharon. Now, the fun part. Just mix all this up, and there's only one way to do it, y'all. You got to get in there with your hands. Get in there with your hands. Break all that up and mix it up really, really well. So meatloaf is not for sissies. <laughs> you got to keep calm and bake on. Mm. Oh, that smells so good already. All these flavors are incorporating. The breadcrumbs and the egg serve as binders to keep this all nice and, and firm. Yeah, this is looking really nice. Just keep mixing it really well. I'll mix it and, and mash it down like that. And then uh, I'll turn it over. I'll turn it on itself and mash it again. Even with the fat added, look at my hands. There's no, there's no fat. If you've ever patted hamburger meat for burgers or something, and you know how you'll have that layer of fat on your hands when you get done, you won't have that when you've handled venison. Just doesn't have much fat, even with what our processor adds. All right, that is about mixed well. Uh-oh. Scapey. So if you're at homecoming at Faith Free Will Baptist Church tomorrow and you had the meatloaf, comment on this video. <laughs> if you liked it. If you didn't, don't come in. <laughs> Into our... Golly, I'm worn out. Our pre-oiled pan here. Chris Jenkins, this is for you, buddy. Most of y'all watching are probably Kingsman fans. Uh, when we traveled together, when I sang with the Kingsman, of course, Chris sang tenor. I always thought it was so funny because Chris is like myself. He's a pretty good eater, but he hates meatloaf. He hates meatloaf. Chris, you never had my meatloaf. Maybe I should have carried some meatloaf to the bus. I did get him eating uh, Ward's Chili Burgers, Chili Cheeseburgers from Ward's. That's a burger chain in Mississippi. Ah, oh, we used to have one here in my hometown. And it was so good. They served Chili Burgers, homemade root beer in a frosty mug. This pan is actually gonna work out just right for this because it'll shrink up just a little bit. It'll pull away from the sides as it cooks. Now, I haven't told y'all yet about my sauce that goes on top. I'm gonna tell you about it right now. Here is the sauce that I've prepared already. It just consists of about half a cup of ketchup, and two tablespoons of mustard, two tablespoons of white vinegar, and three, eh, maybe four tablespoons of brown sugar. Just mix that all up good. And we're gonna pour that over the top of this. This has actually turned out just perfect for this nine by 12 Pyrex dish. Now I'm gonna take our ketchup mixture here and just pour it over the top. It's going to set it off there. That vinegar in there adds a little bit of a tanginess to it along with the ketchup and the mustard. but gives it that great tomato taste that you, in my opinion, just have to have 
a good meatloaf. I'm going to spread this out evenly. This is going to go in an oven at 350 degrees for about 60, maybe even 90 minutes. But uh, that's it as far as the preparing. And now we're going to put it in the oven. And in about an hour, hour and a half, we'll be showing you how it turned out. All right. Y'all stay tuned. So I can't have meatloaf without mashed potatoes. That's right mashed potatoes, not creamed potatoes. Creamed potatoes are served uh, north of about Tennessee. Down here in the real south, we have mashed potatoes. And I'm about to mash them. Actually, I'm about to mix them. So I guess they're really going to be mixed potatoes. Oh, well. I think everybody watching probably knows how to peel a potato <laughs> and cut them up. That's what happened here. I put them in a big pot. Uh, covered them with water and they've been boiling a while and the uh, potatoes have gotten tender. Now it's basically just a matter of flavoring them. But the first step is to pour off this water. But before I do that, let me show you all this chocolate bunt cake that Kansas made. And Ellie added the chocolate, how do you say that? Ganache. Ganache. Bless you. Mm, looks good and smells good. Okay, I've drained the water off of our potatoes. And this is five pounds of potatoes. I think these are actually white potatoes or russet potatoes. They're not red potatoes. It's all I had. Um, I've, I've used them before and they make really good mashed potatoes. So let's add a few things. First step I'm going to do, uh, you've watched me cook before. You know that in a recipe that calls for butter, or in a recipe that calls for onions, you can't put too much butter and you can't put too much onion. That's just my number one cooking rule. So we're gonna start with a stick of butter. Again, this is about five pounds of potatoes. I've gone ahead and added another half stick of butter. I added an entire 16 ounce uh, container of cream cheese. And I added a good tablespoon of garlic and some garlic powder, just sight seasoning here. I'm gonna add some salt. You can always add more salt. You cannot take more salt out. It's so easy to over salt stuff, which I'm kind of bad to do. We like salt around here. To get the lumps out, I'm going to add the final bit of butter. So that's two sticks of butter. See the black pepper in here? Uh, we, we added that while the potatoes were boiling. And I think that's actually going to be enough. Taste time. Mmm. Mm-mm. Pretty doggone good. Just a little more salt, not much. Ah. I'm about to go lick these. So our mashed potatoes are done. Now I'm going to just transfer them to a crock pot and place them on, on warm so they stay good and warm for Sunday lunch. Roll Tide. You're not living unless you have your Alabama Crimson Tide crock pot. Oh, for a little presentation garnish, I'm just going to sprinkle a little parsley over top. Just like that. And we're set. Let's check our meatloaf. Oh my, see it's getting a little bit crispy around the edges, but look at that, see that boiling, bubbling goodness in there? 
This meatloaf's ready, folks. Let's get it out, and I'll show it to you. I know I say this every time I cook, but oh, I wish y'all could just smell it. I wish y'all could smell that. It is wonderful. Oh my. I would love to get some out and show you a slice, but this has got to go to church. Hey, thanks again for tuning in to this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that quick and really easy uh, way to prepare meatloaf. If you don't have ground venison at your disposal, and I know a lot of people don't, and I know a lot of people don't want it, substitute ground chuck for the ground venison, and uh, it'll turn out uh, almost as good. Hey, y'all give this a try and let me know in the comments how it turned out for you. Thanks again so much for watching, and God bless you. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Bye. We're going to have service this morning and I was going to sing some and then we're going to have old-fashioned I call it dinner on the ground order for lunch and you know that's something else Jesus liked to do he loved his disciples and he loved to eat with them bread and fish upon the fire we try to do Christ like as we can at our services don't we right. Jesus paved the way and we just follow him I'm going to introduce our pastor to you. His name is Brother Scott Driver. Love him with all our hearts. He preaches the Bible. Amen. Nothing else. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see each and everybody out this morning. We need to really remember what homecoming is truly about. We have come together to give God Almighty, His Son Jesus Christ, the praise that He deserves. Yes. That's Amen. why we're here for homecoming. We have to remember this is not our home. This is not our world. We're just passing through. We're getting prepared for the home that is coming. Can you truly imagine there never being any more darkness, any more pain, any more suffering, any more worry, any more worried about how your kids going to, are going to turn out, how they're doing in school, how they're going to do with their job. There's going to be no more worrying about that one day. When Jesus steps out, people, we are going home. But here's the key to the whole thing. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not go. Those who are prepared will meet him in the air. But if you're not, hell will be your new home. A lot of folks don't like to hear that. A lot of folks don't like pre uh, preachers to preach on hell and say it's a chance you may go. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, hell will be your new home. People, we need to be guiding up. We need to get back where we need to be and put Satan back in his place. Amen. Glory to God, this is homecoming. We're ready to go home and Jesus comes out today. Are you ready? Amen. This is the time where we need to get right. We need to be on the word of God. We need to stand true on that rock because Jesus is coming. His word tells me he is. My Jesus, my Lord and Savior is no liar and he does not break promises. 
Our job is, is to glorify his name. Let people know that he is still saving souls. He is still a forgiven God. He is still coming back after his children. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the church. I am the root of the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Jesus Christ is everything to us in our lives if you know him as your Lord and Savior.